So a mineral is a natural occurring element or compound. It has an orderly internal structure um, and is in a crystal form. So I have a few of these minerals to show you. A really common one is quartz, okay? So this one here is quartz and you can see these the beautiful crystal structure here. Look at all those beautiful crystals. And you can see in the crystals that they're actually quite an ordered thing. You can see that the sides of them are flat and straight. All those beautiful crystals there. So this one is quartz. And this is actually what sand is made up of. And a lot of our rocks are made up of this quartz as well. So our sedimentary rocks, most of them will have some sort of a quartz compound in them. Here's another one for you. Um, this is amethyst. And amethyst is um, essentially purple quartz. And you can see the crystals in there reflecting the light back into the camera. This one here is another mineral and this one's called galena. So it's a natural, naturally formed mineral um, and it contains lead sulfide so um, you can see over here that sort of gray but super shiny part there so that's the lead sulfide in it and you can also see um, see how it's sort of like got cubic sort of shapes in there see how it's ordered in these like little cubes okay that we call the cleavage of the mineral so really ordered a strange word for what it is but it's we're talking about the cleavage of it so whether those um, different cubic parts if they're straight if they're at 90 degrees they're the sort of things that we look for in minerals but all this shininess all that sparkliness that is all from the minerals in these pieces um, another one we have here is olivine okay and the characteristic of this particular min mineral is that it is that beautiful green color. This is quite a big piece of olivine. Okay, and look at all those green, green crystals there. A rock is a combination of many different minerals. So that's the difference between a mineral and a rock. So a mineral is your naturally occurring element or compound, um, but a rock is actually a combination of many of those. And we, there are three different types of rocks. You can have sedimentary rocks, metamorphic rocks, and igneous rocks. The first one I'm gonna show you the characteristics of is a sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rocks are formed from the particles of sediment, and they actually make up about 75% of exposed rock on the surface of the land. So here I'm going to show you a few different types of sedimentary rock. This one here is an example of sandstone. Okay, so you can see the different colors in this rock and you can actually see the different layers. See all those layers? That is a really telltale sign that this particular rock is a sedimentary rock. So what happens is that um, minerals and other rocks uh, might get eroded away and then the sediments, they get moved and um, sat down in a, uh, in a particular place. And so all these sediments here, they then get compressed. So, and under the heat and pressure of the compression, it becomes rock. And these different lines, uh, they tell us what I guess is happening over time. So. Each line will be made up of a different composition of sediments and rocks. This sandstone, obviously made up um, primarily of sand and quartz. So you can see some of those quartz minerals in here, particularly the lighter colored sections in here, there's a fair bit of quartz in the rock. Here are some other examples of sedimentary rocks. So again, this one is a beautiful example of that layering that is very common for our sedimentary rocks and those colors in there. And you can start to look at the colors and think about what sort of minerals it might be made up of. So in here, we've got this beautiful green. It's probably a little bit of olivine in there, in that layer. The red here, 
is usually um, talking about some iron. So if anything has that really red, rich red color, it's probably because it's a fair bit of iron in there as well. Another common feature of our sedimentary rock is actually the presence of fossils. So because sedimentary rock is made up of lots of different layers of sediment that have been compressed together, sometimes within those layers in the sediment, a um, living organism or the remains of an organism can be compressed and preserved as fossils. So here we have a chunk of sedimentary rock. Now this piece of sedimentary rock was actually at one stage underwater. Now any uh, rock that's formed underwater is awesome for fossils. And this is because the sediment in the water is able to settle really quickly over an organism that might have just died and settled to the bottom before it can get ruined by uh, another predator eating it. And so we get these beautiful um, preserved fossils. So in here, okay, you can see here, this is the remains of some sort of a shell that's been fossilized. Over here, you can see the imprint of what could have been um, maybe a, some sort of a plant or a fern, an aquatic fern. There's a little bit more of that here. See that imprint of that pattern? And even in here as well, maybe some sort of a, a coral there or some sort of a plant has ha had an imprint in the rock. On the back here, another shell shaped one. Okay, so that also helps us to know that at one point this rock was formed under the water. Here is an example of mudstone. A really big piece of mudstone it's very heavy and if we turn it round you'll be able to see that there is a fossil imprint of a scallop okay so see here this is what the actual shell of the scallop looks like okay and what we have here as a fossil is the imprint of that scallop and you can see it was obviously quite a big one okay so if in comparison that one in the size of my, in my hand and then in comparison this one is that's been preserved is quite a big one and so fossils can help us to understand a lot about um, organisms that lived a really long time ago that we might not see today but also the sizes of them um, and where they lived and how they lived they give us a lot of information about that and that is often um, found in our sedimentary rock. Our next type of rock is igneous rock. Now more than four-fifths of the Earth's crust is actually made up of igneous rock. The word igneous means fire and so that tells us that these rocks were actually formed by the cooling down of molten rock, either within the Earth's crust or after it has poured onto the Earth's surface through a volcano. So these are our volcanic type rocks. There's two types of igneous rocks. The first one is called intrusive rock. And this is formed beneath the Earth's surface. Um, so it hasn't come out of the volcano, but it has um, been cooled and formed beneath the Earth's surface. And these types of rocks have really, really large crystals because the crystals have more time to grow. Um, so I have an example of a few of these here. So one type of intrusive igneous rock is granite. Now you might be lucky enough to have some granite in your home, maybe as a, on your kitchen bench, it could be made out of granite. Um, this on this side is a raw piece of granite, but you can see those large crystals there. See that they're quite big. So that's because the granite has been formed under the surface and the cooling down um, in this rock was slow and that helps the crystals to grow bigger. If the cooling down is really fast, we end up with really, really tiny crystals. And I'll show you examples of those in a minute. Um, the granite on your kitchen bench probably looks like this. So it's been polished and it's all nice and shiny. So granite is an intrusive igneous rock. And another type of intrusive igneous rock is diorite. So again, it actually could look quite similar to the granite. And then you can see these big, big shiny crystals in there. 
Okay, so essentially if the crystals are big enough for you to see with, your, with the naked eye, okay, you see those shiny crystals there, then it's probably an intrusive igneous rock being formed under the surface. An example of extrusive rock, the most common one is actually basalt. So it's a black rock. And as you can see, you can't really see any crystals with the naked eye. So as I move this around, you can see that the particles in the rock are actually very small. There's some slight shimmering in here and that's from those very small crystals. So this has happened because it's been cooled down on the outside of the earth. So um, probably the magma has come out of a volcano and as it's cooled down and solidified, it's actually done that quite quickly because it's out on the surface of the earth. And so because it's done it so quickly, the crystals have not had time, so you can see some tiny ones in here, to form as largely as they would have if they were under the surface. Here's another example of an extrusive one. This is obsidian. I love this obsidian. It's so strange, like it looks wet, but it's not. And these, these aren't necessarily, um, they're not big crystals. It's just the, the way that it's been formed and cooled down. So don't be fooled. This is not large crystals. They're actually really tiny crystals in here, but just the, the color and the shininess of the obsidian makes it look like it's been wet with water. It's a really cool one. Another example of an extrusive rock is pumice. Okay, you might see these in different bathroom products. Um, it's a really light rock. Okay, it is a rock though. Okay, and it is, if you look at these, all these little air bubbles have almost sort of been preserved or left their mark in this rock. And so that is a, f a feature that is um, unique to our igneous rocks is sometimes because the rock is cooled down so quickly on the, on the outside of the surface of the earth, maybe after coming the magma coming out of a, of a volcano, that the air bubbles get trapped and we end up with a rock that looks like this, like pumice. It's really cool. The last type of rock is a metamorphic rock. Now there's a few different ways that a metamorphic rock can be formed, um, but essentially a metamorphic rock, so the word morph means to change. And so a metamorphic rock is actually made up of um, a mixture of different sedimentary or igneous rocks that have been buried deep below the earth's surface. Um, and the, the high temperatures down there have caused these rocks to change and to morph. Um, so the large forces within the earth and the intrusions of, of magma, our liquid rock, can squeeze and heat the areas of nearby rock. So this causes the rocks to change form and create a new rock and we call this a metamorphic rock. And this process we call metamorphism. So it means changed form. So here are some examples of metamorphic rocks. So here I have some gneiss. Okay, and you can see some evidence of different types of rock in there. Again, you can see the crystals as well. So there's little shiny little bits that keep catching the light there. And the different colors of crystals in there. Here's another example of a metamorphic rock. So this one here is marble. And marble can have lots of different colors, um, but it's commonly got a lot of white in it because it's rock composed of recrystallized carbonate minerals and that carbonate is a white color.